everyone, and welcome to The Power of Her Story. We're back here once again with another exciting, powerful guest. The Power of Her Story is all about celebrating and curating the journey of women from around the world. And my famous quote, I'd like to call it, it says, life is a journey of people, places, and perspectives. And today, our journey takes us into New Providence to a very exciting and vivacious young lady who is doing great things in New Providence and the Bahamas and the region, as a matter of fact, at the region at large. And today, our special guest is none other than Miss Sherelle Cartwright. And I want to share a little bit about her and what she is doing. And so, and trust you me, what I'm about to read does not do her justice at all. Sherelle Cartwright is the CEO of Mama Sassy's Gourmet Food, which is a food processing company based in the Bahamas. Her focus is and main objective is to bring organic and authentically Bahamian products to a local and international market. We process locally grown organic produce and create everyday artisan food items such as pepper jams and jellies, glazes, salad dressings, and pepper marinades. Some products may also be infused with locally crafted alcoholic beverages. Mama Sassy's is dedicated to ensure a high gourmet standard and quality for all of its products. So help me welcome to our studio today, Miss Sherelle Cartwright. Hello. Hi, and welcome. Welcome to The Power of a Story a product production rather of RBN TV studio. We are so <laughs> delighted to have you here with us today to tell us a little bit more about Sherelle Cartwright and Mama Sassy's. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank so Miss Sherelle Cartwright, like I told you, you're growing and growing. So tell us about Mama Sassy's. Who is Mama Sassy's? What is Mama Sassy's? Give us the inside. Now we want all of it. We don't want part of it. We want the whole story. Tell us, how did Mama Sassy's come about? Give us this story. I know it's a very exciting one. Well, I like to cook sometimes. <laughs> I, You know how I am creative in that regard. When you catch me in the mood, I could do a six-course meal and think nothing of it. Uh, everything different and unique. I always try to... to um, prepare dishes and stuff that are off the beaten path. And of course, my friends know that. Mm -hmm. And I have some friends who are a little bit too much uh, at home. Don't let all the secret out. <laughs> and so I had this friend who, uh, they wouldn't call, would mm -hmm. just show up on my door. Before they say hello, the first words out of their mouth, so what you cook today? And you know, one of the, on one of the occasions, I was like, you asking me what I cook today? You come here with your hands swinging. You didn't even bring nothing for me to cook, and you want to know what I cook today? <laughs> I say, how you could come here with your hands swinging? Mm -hmm. So they said to me, yeah, I, they threw Lunas, and I threw Lunas in their face. However, they came back the following day, with this big bag, I think it was about a 10 pound bag of gold peppers. Wow. And threw it on the counter and said, well, you always say I come in with my hand empty, so figure out what you're gonna do with that. And whenever you decide to make what you make with that, call me, let me sample, come sample it. So I'm like, hold on now. I expecting maybe a nice, unique piece of meat or something a little exotic like some quails or something I could really get all excited about. But no, bag of goat peppers. I'm like, are you kidding me? And uh, I thought about it and I said, you know what, let me just see what I could come up with for this goat peppers. And I said, you know, I've never made a pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. And so I ran in there and I came up with a, a, a basic pepper sauce and uh, there was a lady who was doing some work at the house and I had her sample and she liked it. And she was like, uh, can I take some of this home with me? Um, when she came back again, 
she asked if she could have some more if any was left over she tried it with her friends and they liked it and of course other friends came by and i had them sample it and then i got the creative idea to try to do something unique and different mm. uh, and i came up with two flavors um, mm. because i didn't want a pepper sauce as a pepper sauce like the traditional pepper sauce what i wanted was a marinade and mm. something that had flavor on its own, not just the pepper, something that people could use uh, to prepare any day, di everyday dishes. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with two flavors. One was a mango, carrot, and pineapple pepper mm -hmm. marinade. Um, and the other one was uh, a papaya pepper mm -hmm. marinade, which had papaya, rosemary, and Spanish thyme in it. Uh, okay. Both of them were what I started out with. And then somebody said to me, well, what about jam and jelly? And I had all these peppers still, right? Because I had all of them frozen in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Let me try that. And then me not wanting to do the regular thing, like people always have guava jam. They always have something like that native or whatever i'm like you know what let me try to do something different again and so i started with the cranberry because it was around christmas time okay and people like cranberry with their ham and stuff like that so i did a cranberry pepper jelly that you could use as a garnish on your ham or whatever meat you wanted that okay. turned into six flavors okay. wow and i was wow. like okay i don't just want fruit Let's try using something alcoholic that's just indigenous to the Bahamas. And I had collect bear. So I'm like, you know, why not I do a collect bear pepper jelly? Wow. So that. People love that. Then I went to Bristol Cellars and got a chance to speak with one of the owners. And, and it was like, yeah. I, I, and the whole concept behind Mama Sassy, of course, like I said, is to uh, introduce Bahamian products mm -hmm. to a local and international market. Mm -hmm. um, I found that there was a lot of uh, spoilage, wastage in crops coming to Mount Nassau to market. I felt mm -hmm. it was a waste of those people's hard time, effort, and labor. Plus, that's mm -hmm. a financial a loss, a financial loss. Mm -hmm. So, everything with Mama Sassy's is I try to incorporate our local. Um, um, farmers or our local produce into it, but that extends to even our local drinks. So okay. the clear there. So I'm a little bit curious right now. Mm -hmm. Where did the name Mama Sassy's come from? <laughs> if I tell you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Okay. So but give us the abbreviated version. I was, tell you. I was okay. trying to find out a name for the company. Uh -huh. And a very good friend of mine, uh, I, 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 I'm bad at names. So a very good friend of mine said, um, you know what? You so sassy, just like those sauces. So why not call it mama sassy? Okay. <laughs> and okay. I tried the name on, uh, you know, I use other people as sounding boards and they're like, oh, we love it. We love it. We love it. It's something it's unique. It's fun. It's different. Mm -hmm. And it's something that is not traditional as you are not traditional mm -hmm. so they were like you're uniquely who you are um celebrate you and add that to your products because um like me they say i'm multifaceted um uh, and very creative is, and yeah. multi-talented as well i must say because of our pre-interview conversation yeah. i really you know we we're here to celebrate you the whole uh, purpose behind yeah. the power story is to hear the story and the journey of women from not just in the Bahamas from around the world We all have a story to tell and you've given us the genesis of Mama Sassy's you told us how the name came about But I would only imagine as an entrepreneur as a businesswoman in particular You would have had to experience some challenges What are some of those challenges that you had to overcome to get you to this point right now because there's even some more you you're going to share with us uh because you've expanded your line but I, I i i know there has to be a story behind the success as to where you're at share with us a little bit more about the challenges that you may have had to overcome 
Well, as with starting any new business, um, I think the first challenge that one has to overcome is here. It's in the mind. Um, I knew I was gifted when it came to preparing food and stuff like that. I know I could handle myself with the chefs out there. Um, but taking it to the next level and putting it out there for other people to enjoy and appreciate is another thing. I had to get myself in the space where I really wanted to do it. Um, because as I told you, I like to cook, but I'm not the kind who's going to be in that kitchen every day. I am not into that. I can tell you emphatically that that's not my passion. Mm -hmm. um, you have to catch me when I'm in that mood. So the first thing was my mindset. Mm -hmm. um, it was also intimidating because, number one, I had no business experience, no kind of business acumen per se. I dabbled with starting a business um, before. That ended in disaster because um, I had somebody working with me who stole a lot of my products. Um, so it left me feeling some kind of way and knowing that the judicial system really gave me no solid recourse to recoup that loss. Mm -hmm. So as with any business, the first thing is the big M word, which is money. Um, that is always the biggest challenge because you have to get your raw material you have to get so many different things to even make the product before you get it to that level when you're putting it out there. Then you have to educate yourself because when you have the money to make the products, if you're not pricing the products right, you could be losing from that. So now you have to get the business knowledge for you to be able to successfully launch your products or whatever it is that needs to follow when you're putting that product out to market because it's just not you having the talent and you doing the stuff. There's some things that you have to do. You have to get into the science of it. You have to get to know, um, you know, if you're giving it's a food product, you have to know that people are going to eat this. Does this product meet safety standards for consume, for people to consume your product? You have to, um, know whether how long it's going to last when you prepare it is there any way you can preserve the shelf life of your products um, then you have to know that people really like your product or how they respond to your product so you 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 have to market your product you have to go there and test your product on people and those are challenges within themselves especially in our country where knowledge is not readily available Mm -hmm. I can tell you it's been like pulling out hairs, trying to get people who were in these departments who were supposed to be knowledgeable to help you, to get them to help you. Mm -hmm. So at some point you have, the, have to have the tenacity to go out there and say, well, guess what? I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to keep pushing with this. Even if I make one step and it takes me a whole year to make that step, I'm going to learn everything that I can learn about my business mm -hmm. um, in order to overcome those challenges. Because at the end of the day, if you don't know your product, if you're mm -hmm. not confident in your product, mm -hmm. your product will never amount to anything. So true. So, so far, some of the nuggets that I'm pulling from you in what you shared, you talk about a mindset, having the right mindset to first to even embrace that journey of becoming an entrepreneur. Um, as you had mentioned, you know, it can be um, intimidating because of what is ahead. And if you don't have the, the funding and or the education, it can become, a, a, you know, a great challenge. Um, you did say to educate yourself, educate yourself about business, educate yourself about the industry in which you're positioning yourself in. And lastly, you talk about tenacity. Unfortunately, 
um, even though there was supposed to have been the support system there to, to give you the necessary guidance and, and everything else, it didn't quite work in your favor. So it is through your tenacity and keep pushing, keep pushing because you believed one in yourself because the mindset that you have and you believe in your product that it allowed you to continue and bring you to this particular day. And um, again, at every opportunity, we want you to know Sherelle Cartwright. We celebrate you and Mama Sassy's and what you have accomplished because you are a pioneer for us as women. You're a pioneer as a Bahamian to showcase and show the world that anything is possible. Once you put your mind to it and you have, you know, you put hard work behind it, it's not easy. That's because right. I'm sure that it has taken you not just a week, not two weeks, or even a month to get to where you're at. It took some time of and sweat and tears. And, and that's what it is. And so we want persons as you listen, as you sharing, because these are some great nuggets. And you have women from all around the world who will be tuning in to you. We want them to understand that it's process. Just yes. as you are a processing company. And you had to take that from a bare pepper and begin to, to add ingredients and flavors and all these things and, until you got to a flavor of product that you were pleased with, what you felt was palatable to your consumers. That in itself was a process. Yes. And so a lot in our power of our store, we talk about process. Process is a place that's very uncomfortable. It's frustrating. I mean, anything possible that does not seem positive happens during process. Yeah. But during process is where you are prepared and where you're positioned. And so now look at you, CEO of a gourmet company that's not only um, catering locally, but internationally. So you added some flavor. You're launching some flavors. And are, are we getting the first dibs on this launch or, or are we, we catching up? <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, I have done, uh, I would call it soft soft launches here uh, mm -hmm. with various products, but I have not done an overall launch to the Mamasati brand. Okay. And okay. when that comes on stream, you will have first dibs. Yes. Um, We're going to hold you to that. Yes, so you can hold me to that because there's still um, a lot that I need to do in terms of the, the vision for the company going forward. Um, and the products is just one uh, phase of it. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, I think I have about 14 or 15. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think it's about 14 or 15. I have 15. I've already stopped counting. I've stopped counting, right? But um, we have some more things that we need to do in order to, there's some international markets that I have my eyes on. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, I will be relentless in pursuing those avenues for my products. Um, one of the thing, another thing what we need to share with people is that don't be afraid to hear no. Yes. You cannot be afraid to hear no. I'm not afraid to hear no. When you tell me no, I'm going to try to get a yes out of you. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out why you're telling me no. Mm -hmm. and what will change your mind? Which will be the deciding factor to hear yes out of you. Mm -hmm. I am determined to go ahead and pursue that avenue. Mm -hmm. So even with developing your product, don't be afraid to hear no. Don't be afraid to hear people don't like your product. Because guess what? Everybody doesn't like coffee and everybody don't like tea. That is so true. So you and, will not please mm -hmm. everybody. What you are sharing, I think, maybe is the most impactful nugget right now is in hearing no. Because many people are afraid of rejection. And so because of that, they give up or they feel that, you know, they become discouraged and they just they just give up on their goals and their dreams because someone said no. But if we take a look at history, most success stories, inclusive of, inclusive of yours, the journey is filtered with no's. And it's in those no's it helps you to, to tweak and improve. That is... Plenty of failure. Well, say like they say... 
It's, I saw something more, most recently that said failure is a platform for success. If you did not fail, let's see how long your success will last because you have to understand the, the challenges that come with it and what works and what doesn't work. And so if you, I call it not that persons can have a success story where it just all went well, mm -hmm. but usually 99% of the times, I could almost say 99.9% .9 of the times, mm -hmm. the success stories that we hear about, when we, we talk um, to the persons in the JC Pennies, to the Tyler Perry's and, and you name it, they will tell you, they have been told no, they have failed, they have written a play, they have produced a product, uh, it just did not work. And so that no helped them to go and improve and become better at what they do. And so, Sherelle, there's some more. Now, oh. we talk, pardon me? You need to have cushion on that bum. <laughs> to bounce back up. <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna fall. And yeah. sometimes that no isn't because you need to um, to uh, perfect your product. Sometimes that no is because people cannot see your value or the value that's in your product. Sometimes that no is because people cannot see your vision. Don't be afraid when people can't see your vision. I look at it and say, guess what? Eventually, they're going to come around. Mm -hmm. I had to, and, and also to another point to share quickly, know your support system. Know your support system and go where you celebrate it. And by that, I mean, find those people who believe in you. Find those people when you want to give up, who are going to say, listen, I got you, girl. Get yourself together. Pity party is not an option. Failure is not an option. Yeah, you had a setback, but let me show you how to do it. Be humble enough to know that you don't have all the answers to making your product a, su a success. Be humble enough to know that, guess what? You're going to stand on plenty people to get your product to that success story, to get yourself to that success story. I so felt that. Send those people in your way who are going to lift you up at the times when you need it most. When I didn't have people to help with marketing, God sent the people to help me with marketing. When I didn't believe in myself and my product, God sent the people there to deal with that too. God had people that pushed me. Um, when I didn't want to push myself, God had them in position, if only for a set time, a season, and a place. God had them there. And so I have to acknowledge that I stand here at this point, and I'm still not where I need to be because mm -hmm. I stood on the shoulders of people who celebrated me, who believed in me, who mm -hmm. saw the vision that I felt for my product and who continued to lift me up when I fell or pull me up is... or drag me up. I know somebody needed to hear that today. And if you haven't figured it out as yet, this is also an anointed, powerful woman of God. So we may be talking business, but she has acknowledged God's blessings in her life. And I am so happy. And like I said, once again, the Power of Story celebrates you. We are so proud to know what you have been doing and what you will continue to do. And so I know our time is starting to wind down, but I want you to tell us a little bit more about the new products, um, the new line that you have, where we can find you. Um, and then there's something else I want to dabble in right towards the end as well, because um, there's something we share in common. And um, we're going to dabble into that towards the end. But tell us a little bit more about your new line, um, flavors, and where people can find you. And I think you have one or two of those sample products right there. We just want to get a look at it. I know our team is going to ensure that the world knows about Mama yeah. Sassy. Yeah. Well, like I said, I have two pepper marinades. Mm -hmm. um, they can be used as pepper sauce or as a marinade on your meat, bake it, in, whatever. Um, normally, I offer it in three temperatures, mild, hot, and extreme, depending on your tolerance level. I have six flavors of pepper jams and jellies, apple jam, cranberry pepper jam, um, pink, spicy pink moscato. Um, I have um, mango rattler, 
um, pepper jelly. I have the bear, colic bear pepper jelly. I also have a mulled wine pepper jelly. Um, I also have now um, honey. So I've added honey to my collection. Um, it's the honey that has all the nutrients. So it's not the frequently harvested honey. It's that nice, rich, thick, dark honey. And I prefer that one. Um, so I have that. I'm thinking about dabbling and doing some other stuff with the honey. Uh, but in the meantime, because uh, during this COVID season, I didn't put my products out there per se. Some people um, thought to pivot in other ways. What I did was use that time to product develop, okay. come up with new products. And one of those things that I came up with was playing with um, balsamic vinaigrettes. Yeah. So I'm getting ready, and you will definitely be the first launch on that. I'm still in product development stage where um, people are sampling uh, the product. It's been holding up pretty well. Uh, so it looks as if it's going to have a viable shelf life. Um, but what I did was I made three types of um, vinegar, balsamic vinaigrettes. Mm -hmm. One that's flavored with mango, mm -hmm. one that's flavored with tamarind, mm -hmm. and one with guava. Oh, that should be and nice and exotic. I tell you, they are the bomb. And Ooh. I use my native honey in that. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. So you just know on now. <laughs> you have to cook along with providing the sauces as well. Yeah, because... no, that's no problem. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I have two um, two businesses that partner with me for my products. One of those is uh, on Betty's Kitchen. Uh, they used my um, bear pepper jelly with their uh, salmon, and they also have this crawfish that they use the bear pepper jelly with. They also use my Guinness glaze. I have a pepper Guinness, Guinness glaze that they use um, on um, their steaks and stuff like that. So the Guinness glaze is good for um, steak. Anything you throw on the grill is good for jerk. As a matter of fact, I took it with me to Jamaica and I sold out. I went to a conference in Jamaica last year and that was the first thing that sold out because they felt they had the claim on Guinness and I had to show them that Ain't nothing happening. We got the real <laughs> McCoy here. <laughs> so there was a problem yeah. between us. Um, so the the um, balsamic vinaigrettes are going to be on stream shortly. As a matter of fact, I will probably send you some so that you can uh, give it away on your show once we uh, get to that phase. So I'm looking at that in another couple of weeks just to see how, you know, test my stability on that some more. Um, there are a lot of things we got coming in store. You know, my passion about it is the product development. Okay. Um, so I like coming up with new and unique things. I always try to stay above the market in terms of me. I never look to what other people are doing in the industry. I like to chart my own course. So I really don't know what a lot of people are putting out there if they have these type of products or not, normally people come and tell me that. Mm -hmm. But another thing I do is I stay focused and I stay true to me and what it is I do. Okay. Um, and I incorporate my products with products. You know, so where you. can we find Mama Sassy's well, um, online, your online, Facebook page? Yes, on my <laughs> Facebook page. Um, I will be launching the Twitter um, and Instagram and uh, working on my website in short order. But um, you can also purchase my products via Mobile Assist. Mm -hmm. Mobile Assist is, uh, you know, the on um, the the mobile payment uh, store app store. Mm -hmm. um, Mobile Assist. You can download Mobile Assist. You can purchase my stuff on Mobile Assist. You can also purchase my stuff on Bahamazar.com. Okay. Uh, now, so other than that, um, you can contact me via the Facebook page. Uh, we are still under development in terms of some other things that we wanted to do with our products. So for the most part, we're still uh, home-based. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can reach me via any one of those platforms in the meantime. Okay. So that's at Sherelle Cartwright on Facebook and Instagram and soon to be Twitter. Yes. And I think also there is a Mama Sassy's Facebook page Absolutely. as well. Mama Sassy. 
Okay, excellent. Okay, so um, our audience who are viewing, you will see all the contacts on the page, so you'll know how to reach Sherelle Cartwright, CEO of Mama Sassy's. So that just not me one will be enjoying all of these wonderful flavors. I want the world to share them with me. So you get to experience what it is. Um, I call it a taste of the Bahamas, um, a little hot and spicy. And mm -hmm. for those who need it a little extreme, you can get it a little bit extreme as well. But we've heard from the CEO, but many people may not be aware of this young lady, uh, creative as she is. And so I'm gonna use some alliteration. So she's Sherelle Cartwright. And so she is a CEO, she's creative, um, but she's also a community builder. She heads an organization. We're both alumni of St. Augustine's College. Yes, yes, <laughs> big red machine. <laughs> and so she has been making, I mean, when I tell you I'm so proud of this young lady, I am I'm forever proud of the work. And I know it has been a challenge to, like you said, sometimes for people to see and understand the vision, it becomes very difficult at times. And she has been pushing with the mm -hmm. Alumni Association. They have made many firsts um, in the Bahamas and the things that they have been doing. Mm -hmm. And the impact is not just felt throughout the St. Augustine's College Alumni Association, but it's felt throughout the community. So tell us a little bit more about what it is you have been doing with the Alumni Association. And um, I know some elections are coming up if it hasn't happened as yet, um, but I, I don't see anything else otherwise happening. So you could actually share some of the vision you have forthcoming because you've been helping students after Dorian. It's just so much, you tell the story. Well, it's been, it's, it's been a collective journey. Um, I had an excellent VP when I started this journey. She was phenomenal in terms of uh, we, we thought alike. Mm -hmm. um, she was one of the biggest supporters when um, I threw stuff out or we threw stuff out and people said, no, it couldn't happen. She's like, oh, no, we're going to make this happen. Uh, one of the things we sought to do was to establish our Lighthouse Awards in Gala, where we wanted to acknowledge not only, um, for the most part, our alumni who are excelling in various fields, um, but also um, acknowledge people who are also community builders. So there are some awards that we have for people who are not alumni of SAC, but we wanted to start the process of acknowledging our people and their contributions to this country and to the communities in which they live. And so that was a passion that I wanted us to start off with. We had two successful years. This would have been the third. Um, apart from COVID, we decided to postpone it until next year or, um, you know, uh, to see how that will um, happen. Um, we, from we started, we wanted to change the dynamics in terms of educating our people as to the role of an alumni association. Um, an alumni association doesn't only support the school that which they come from, but they also support each other. And they're also, they also support the community in which they live because the school is not in a bubble. Our alumni are not in a bubble. Okay, our community is what we have at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So one of the first initiatives we did was we donated sh diabetic shoes to uh, the Di Bahamas Diabetic Association. Mm -hmm. Then we, um, we through alumni, and when I say we, it's not only our alumni association, but our alumni, because we have faithful people who any cause we bring to them, they jump on it and they run with the vision. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, support our track team we give them uh you know items and stuff for, for the athletes uh, we've done um uniforms for the athletes with dorian we were able to um, provide lunch to the kids that needed lunch um, we were able to supply um backpacks and um school material that kind of stuff um, we've been giving the valedictorian um, a, a little cash incentive. We've even helped alumni that were off in college who may have come on, you know, little issues and needed some cash to do certain things. Uh, we try our best to support our people in as many ways as possible. Uh, 
what we've decided to do and actually what will be launched in short of for this month of October, uh, we're launching what we call Operation Lighthouse. So again, you are the first. Okay. Uh, our reps do not even know this as yet. <laughs> uh, but we're launching what we call Operation Lighthouse, where we have decided to partner with three um nonprofits in the community we in Nassau. One is Great Commission. Mm -hmm. um, the other is Bishop Arnold Josie's uh, church, the Commonwealth Baptist, because they feed and support people within the eastern area. And then also we want to partner and, and, and raise funds for Bishop Lawrence Roll and his feeding mm -hmm. program, okay. as we've been doing that faithfully so, for so many years. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the kind of initiative that we're looking to do. We're looking to partner or have partner with us um, other business uh, businesses and, and our alumni and stuff to really make this a powerful show, seeing that the food program is going to be um, ending shortly. We wanted to be able to do our part and to give that little push. And so for this month, we're, we're looking, we're asking all business partners, whatever you can spare, whether it's a financial donation, you can donate to our alumni association, put a note in there to say it's Operation Lighthouse. You can go on mobile assist. People, if you want to, please go on mobile assist. That's the easiest way. Look for SAC Alumni Association. Make a payment, even if it's only $5, towards Operation Lighthouse so that we can have as much money in that kitty uh, to go ahead, go ahead and help these three uh, pillars in our society that help mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Remember Operation Lighthouse. Um, keep that name and go on to Mobile Assist and to whatever donation you have, $5, $10, 20 and some of you can do a 1000 you yes. give that thousand dollars. It is all about supporting the community. And Either so, money Shirelle, or, sorry. sorry, money or items, whatever items you choose to give. If some people don't feel comfortable giving the money, and they have items that people may need, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, sanitary items or whatever hygiene items, whatever it is, we take. Mm -hmm. If it's well, meat, if you have a meat company and you want to give some meat or you are a fisherman and you want to donate some fish, whatever it is, we'll take it. Well, so, we are so glad to hear that. And so we know the public at large, not, and you know, the good thing about the YouTube channel is this, your cries is not just going out to the Bahamas. So people around the world, if you want to donate, you can go to Mobile Assist app, which is an app getting downloaded. You can go to the iOS or Google Play stores, download Mobile Assist, and you can make a contribution to this worthy cause. We know that there are a number of NGOs, international NGOs, that are around. They're looking for ways in which that they can contribute to uh, communities like ours. And so feel free to be able to support this initiative. It is a worthy initiative. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, I've worked with and along with as alumni of St. Augustine's College that where they say the money is going it goes there so you don't have any concerns there's true accountability and transparency as mm -hmm. to what happens and how it happens so feel free to make and include lighthouse operate operation lighthouse let me get it right operation lighthouse feel free to include that as a part of your donations through the course of this year we're entering into a season of well we're in fall and heading into thanksgiving and into Christmas soon enough, and there are many who will not have. This is your opportunity to give back and to support someone. And so that $5 can perhaps buy a meal for someone. Yes. So don't think it's too small. Your $5 and my $5 can add up and make a meal for a family. And so, Sherelle, we want to thank you. We celebrate you for all thank that you. you're doing. Thank Have you. Have Gourmet Foods, as well as what you're doing with the Alumni Association and other things that you're doing that you didn't have opportunity to speak about. She is a professional singer as well. And we pray that she will be back to render a little note. Maybe she could just say a, ah, somewhere in there. And like, <laughs> Hold on. It ain't for Raquel. <laughs> I leave it all to you, my good lady. And so 
Thank you once again for joining us on The Power of Her Story with our special guest in New Providence, and that is Sherelle Cartwright. So feel free to tune in every Monday at 6 p.m. for The Power of Her Story, where we have new episodes that are loaded on our RBN TV YouTube channel. Feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or on well, YouTube. I mean, we have so many different social media platforms. Sometimes I don't remember them all. But we thank you for supporting. Don't forget, like and subscribe so you will know when new shows are coming out. Thank you once again for joining us. God bless you and see you again real soon. Listen, there is a point of